In the first section of this chapter, we learn that databases come in all forms, including this shopping list that you see here. Whether or not you have the book, with this figure, we get to see what the exact same shopping list would look like if it was inside of a table in SQL Server. The figure 1.2 shopping list has seven rows and three columns. The first column is item number, the second column is description, and the third column is price. The first row has an item number of one, a description of milk, and a price that equals a dollar. In GeekSpeak, a collection of rows and columns of data is called a table. Figure 1.2 is a screen capture of a table from SQL Server. This table has only seven rows. Calling them rows is fine in GeekSpeak, but a few hardcore SQL folks might want to call them records. If you have seven rows, you can also say that you have seven records. Just how many columns do we have? It looks like we have three. The correct word for column in Geek, it actually gives you two choices. You can choose between the word column or field. Here you can say we see three columns, or you can say that we see three fields. So we have seven records, and each record or row has its own item number, its own description, and its own price. Each record has three fields. In Geek, we say this table is populated with seven records. Since we do not know the values that might be contained in the next record or the eighth record, this is an unknown. Each of the three cells in this potential record contains what are called null values. Null doesn't mean zero. Null means we do not know the value yet. Maybe it will be sugar. Maybe it will be priced at $1.75 or gum at $1.10. For now, just think of null as unknown or not specified, but anything is possible later. Nulls will be covered more deeply in the upcoming chapters. If you start off with seven records in your table and you delete two of them, you would have five records remaining. If you deleted all of your records, you would have an unpopulated table. Once again, the shopping list has three fields. The first field name in this table is item number. The second field name is description. The third field name is price. Oftentimes, the first field is numeric or some other identifier to help prevent duplicates. For example, we don't want to have two items numbered four. Now, a business might have two employees named David, but each employee would have a different employee number. The fields offer you more than just a name atop your data. You can see we have integer data for the ID, alphabetical data for the description, and decimals for the price. It seems clear what type of data is acceptable for each field of any given record. In SQL Server, the database fields are constrained so that they only accept a specific data type. The way this table is set up, if you accidentally typed sugar in the price field for a newer existing record, SQL will not accept that entry. Fields are protected or constrained using data types. You can enter different numerics, such as $1.95 or $22.50, into a decimal field since those values match the data type accepted by that field. If you look at where a field and a record meet, you get a cell that holds a single value. In a table with seven rows and three fields, you can hold 21 values. That wraps up Database Geek Speak in Chapter 1 of Beginning SQL Joes to Pros. Next up, check out Lab 2.1, Single Table Queries. <laughs>